you. Good morning. <clears throat> Good afternoon, even. Um, my presentation is not really about fuel, it's about saving fuel. Um, we're talking about wind, wind-assisted devices um, and some sea trials that we've just conducted. I want to stress at the outside that I'm on this panel because we work with fuel. We're not suggesting that we will ever always have a 100% wind-powered vessel. So um, this is a complementary uh, solution. It could be described as energy efficiency. I prefer it not to be because I think it provides a thrust. Um, so we wanted to talk about today about the wind, of, uh, wind as a service offer that we're developing. So we reduce fuel use on certain vessels by up to 40%, but we improve commercial resilience and it enables compliance whilst saving cost. And I think that's really important. So um, to me, it was Im important to understand that the market is seeing a lot of news about wind. And for my company, I want us to be honest open and thorough and I, it, it seems to me there's a bit of a wild west kind of mine will save this and mine will save that i want us to be able to collaborate with the industry and to understand and that's how we've got here today what your challenges are because of course the wind can move ships through the water we know that we've seen it for eight thousand odd years but how do we int introduce retrofit solutions into a 21st century system? So what we've learned is it needs to be affordable, it needs to be accessible, and it needs to be um, a business case. So how do we do that? We needed to have some performance metrics, which I think was a really interesting presentation from uh, Mr. Zanatos just now on the sea trials, which is what this presentation is going to follow up on. So we're looking at offering a better service to ship owners and to the shipping community. Um, so that means there's not only is the hardware, but we've got software and that feeds into a customer proposition where we can provide the wind as a service, by which I mean there doesn't need to be an upfront capital cost. We can um, arrange the finance for a lease basis, which is how we have developed renewable energy uh, onshore. So I think we're looking at autonomous wing sales, so we've had to do a lot of work on how that develops. We're looking at how do we optimise the route, how can we predict the performance, and then when we've got a fast rig enabled ship, how do we optimise it? And then how do we engage with clients to make it easy and accessible for the market to take up the technology? So, we did sea trials, and I'm really grateful to Argo Navis for explaining how complicated it is, because a lot of people said to me, well, you know, why aren't you cracking on and getting us the results, and, you know, it's, it can't be that difficult. It is immensely difficult. Uh, we've had to develop the design, we've had to work collaboratively across all of these companies that have been involved in our project. Um, we've tested the, the rig on land, then we installed it on a ship that we chartered, and then we conducted the sea trials over a number of weeks. And we're now just producing the results for our customer proposition. So the sea trials objectives were to take the digital twin modeling, the CFD and the, mod the tank testing that we've done. We also did some new analysis around the impact of the wind on the propeller and the side force. Importantly, we wanted to be able to develop an easy install and deinstall system so we could have a flexible offering for the market. So you could install for a charter, uh, length of a, char a long term charter, or you could deinstall if the vessel was getting older and needed to be scrapped. You could take this new technology off by keeping an older vessel compliant. Safety, robustness, crew acceptance, all of those things were really important. Um, and learning from the sea trials to improve the performance um, and the production design. So I'm not going to go into this because this is from my academic colleagues and it's way above my pay grade, but it's complicated to, to do this stuff and we've worked with the University of Southampton, with LR um, and with ship owners to understand uh, not only how the wind performs but how it impacts some of the other systems in the ship. And we've included that into um, our new uh, polars or, 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 or performance prediction um, digital tools, which we call FastRig. 
fast route. So um, this really builds on the real life trial that we did. So we worked under the ITTC guidelines. Um, we were effectively uh, running the single wing on a smaller ship, um, running uh, a certain distance with the wing up and then going back and doing a certain, even in that time the wind changed. So we know that it's not a, it's not a perfect science, but it is quite significant to enable us to get um, really useful data um, on how the, the, the vessel uh, performs with and without the, without the technology. And we had installed a lot of sensitivity and analysis um, equipment, which had been done by one of our naval architecture um, associates called Holder. Um, this particular video shows the first ever lift that we did. So it was a very proud moment for me because I've been working on this project since 2009. But um, what was critical about it was we, we weren't expecting the, um, the, the, initially the crew were a bit skeptical about us and thought we were a bunch of green hippies or something. Um, but once they'd installed it, once they'd seen how um, the performance was improved, they really engaged with the sea trials process and they became our biggest advocates. In the engine room there was a whiteboard with all sorts of advice for us on how we could improve our solution. Um, and this is just another little clip of um, the ship under sail and um, I was on a rib, by the way, um, out in this, so they were all on the bridge showing us their cups of coffee whilst it was all pretty blustery out there. But um, it was a really important um, development that we worked together with the university to make sure the tests were scientific and that can be validated. And that's important because um, to be able to build a business case, we need to know how we can value the um, cost of the fuel saving on any ship, on any route. So the sea trials corroborated the digital models that we have um, created, and that corroboration gives us confidence to predict um, developed digital models with different ship types and different wing sizes in it. So what we're looking at is um, a commercial install next. And what we've been able to do, what we're able to do is to um, underpin the commercial arrangements with verified performance prediction. And that gives the ship owner the cargo owner, the financier, the insurers, the confidence to contract around um, commercial arrangements. And most specifically, we work with cargo owners um, who have a strong need and desire internally in their domestic and, com uh, and um, corporate uh, uh, ESG, um, Environmental Sustainability Governance, <clears throat> they want to reduce emissions. It's monetized within their organization. So we can work with all of the parties around the table once we have this, this, this verified data to create contractual arrangements um, with, a, with a plus or minus degree of uncertainty in them. So what that means is that because it's retrofittable, because it's robust, because it is recyclable, we can put that on a lease contract basis, um, which is why we wanted to make it easy to install and deinstall. So it's made of aluminium, it's really lightweight, so it doesn't need quite so much invasive installation as some of the other products we see. It doesn't need quite so much um, consistent energy takeoff from, from the engine. So. As I say, you can put it on for a long-term contract, you can take it off, at the, uh, you can install it to extend the life of an older vessel. So it's also made retractable because the ship owners that we work with say that we want to get this thing in and out of port and get the cargo on and off because that's the purpose of the ship, right? So how, how do we get it out of the way for those um, occasions? So. What we've done is worked collaboratively a lot across the industry with a coalition of the willing who have been very enthusiastic about um, telling the story. 
and uh, working together to not be compliant necessarily, but they will be compliant, but just because they think it's the right thing to do, they think it's a good opportunity to be developing robust long-term business systems. So what we have established is that the fast rig technology works and it works in a way that we can predict um, the performance and that means that we can um, roll out the technology and, and, and I, I would also like to say it's not we don't see this as for every single ship we you know it's not necessary we've already talked it's not necessarily for for short um, sea vessels it's not necessarily for ferries deep deep sea bulkers, tankers, we can see a really big opportunity there. So we've got on first commercial installation lined up, um, but then we'll be going into um, mass production and um, providing the wind as a service as a low cost, full service leasing solution, which has got um, the support for the operation and maintenance and the crew training as part of that program. So we've tried to look at it holistically um, and we've wanted to um, move away from just, this is just a bit of hardware that you can use, but to work together with all of the players across the shipping ecosystem to find a solution that works. And a lot of that knowledge is coming out of the oil and gas industry. The technology comes from there or it comes from the renewable power sector. So it's just, this is the problem, how do we find a solution? Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing. We're very fortunate to have a, a number of very important investors, including um, a large power company called Drax in the UK and um, MOL who have invested in us and they've provided a lot of in information and input and market knowledge. But I think this technology wind assist has come of, have come of age. We have proven that it works and now we need to take it to market. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to talking about it later.